Hello, dear AI enthusiasts. Welcome to my latest video, where today we're taking a deep look at DeepSeek V31, a model that's currently causing quite a stir in the AI community. Are you already using open source AI models, or do you rely on commercial offerings? Write it now in the comments. I'm really curious about your experiences. You've definitely seen it everywhere. Thumbnails with big red arrows, shocked faces, and headlines like DeepSeek destroys all other AI models, or the free alternative is better than premium models. But is this really true? That's exactly what we'll find out today. I just conducted a fascinating experiment. I tested it with a complex mathematical problem, a cubic function that included extreme points, inflection points, and integrals. What surprised me? The results weren't just correct, but also remarkably clearly structured. I also compared it with other models like Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and the differences were revealing. But more on that later. Before we dive into the details, let's take a moment to understand what DeepSeek 5 3.1 actually is. This new model is based on a mixture of experts' architecture with a total of 671 billion parameters. However, only about 37 billion are activated per query. This is an efficient method to optimize computing power while delivering impressive results. The model was trained with 14.8 trillion tokens and offers a context window of up to 1 million tokens, a significant advancement compared to previous versions. Especially important, V31 is completely open source under the MIT license. This means you can freely download it, modify it, and even use it in commercial projects, a huge advantage over closed commercial models. In benchmark tests, it shows impressive results. On LiveBench, a test for coding skills. It performs excellently. Also in mathematical tasks and general comprehension tests like MMLU, it is on par with top models such as Claude 3.7 Sonnet. But caution, benchmarks are like school grades. They give an impression, but not the complete picture. They are often created under ideal conditions and don't always reflect the real user experience. Therefore, we shouldn't blindly trust them. In various tests, a differentiated picture emerges. In web development, DeepSeek still lags behind commercial models. The output often still contains errors and inaccuracies that are less common in applications like Claude 3.7 Sonnet. For SEO texts and simpler reasoning tasks, on the other hand, it is completely convincing and can even generate more human-sounding texts that are harder to detect by AI detectors. It is particularly strong in coding tasks in front-end and back-end areas. Here, both speed and quality of results impress. One tester concluded that DeepSeek VI 3.1 could be a good alternative to commercial models, especially when it comes to quick implementations. For my own test, I deliberately chose a mathematical task, the analysis of a cubic function. V31 correctly identified the local maximum value at 1,19 and the minimum value at 3,15. The inflection points, the integral with the value 50.25, and even the demanding calculation of average production costs of $115. Everything was precisely calculated. What particularly impressed me in a task to calculate a distance traveled, DeepSeek immediately recognized that we need to check the sign of the velocity, a detail that shows deep understanding of the underlying physics, not just pure mathematics. What would you use a model like DeepSeek V314? Programming, mathematics, content creation, or education? Vote now in the comments. I'm very curious about your answers. Let the numbers speak. Here are the key facts and how it compares to commercial alternatives. Dot. First, the costs. It is significantly cheaper, in some cases even available for free via OpenRouter. Premium models like Claude 3.7 Sonnet, on the other hand, cost correspondingly more. If you have a limited budget or simply want to experiment without spending much, it's definitely the better choice. Second, accessibility. As an open source model, DeepSeek Vi31 can be run locally on your computer. With 4-bit quantization, it even works on a Mac Studio with acceptable speed. Claude 3.7, on the other hand, is only available via the cloud and requires a stable internet connection. Third, speed. There are contradictory reports here. Some testers report that DeepSeek is slower than commercial models, while others speak of significant improvements compared to previous versions. My impression is that premium models generally respond faster, but the difference could vary depending on the use case. Fourth, accuracy and quality. For general text creation tasks, it and commercial models seem to deliver comparable results. For more complex reasoning tasks, premium models often show an advantage, but DeepSeek Vive 3.1 seems to be better than many would have expected. For coding tasks, it depends very much on the specific request. Sometimes DeepSeek is better, sometimes commercial alternatives. 
Who benefits most from DeepSeek Vi 3.1? Developers and teams with limited budgets who want to use and adapt a powerful model locally. You can download it, integrate it into your own applications and modify it as you wish. For content creators and mathematicians, it's also an excellent option. If on the other hand, you do complex web development or need to solve special reasoning tasks, you should also consider commercial alternatives. An interesting observation, it often gives more formal structured answers than previous versions. Some users prefer this style for professional or academic purposes, while others prefer the more casual, human-like tone of commercial models. Have you already had experiences with DeepSeek Vi 3.1? Share your experiences in the comments. I'm very curious about your perspectives. Regarding the future, DeepSeek is definitely a company to keep an eye on. The Chinese government is investing massively in AI and DeepSeek seems to be at the forefront of this development. With an amazingly low training budget of just $5.58 million for V3.1, which is remarkably low for a model of this size and performance, DeepSeek shows that it can operate highly efficiently. Particularly interesting is the fact that it was developed despite US export restrictions on advanced chips. This suggests that these restrictions may not be as effective as intended and shows how quickly the open source AI landscape is developing. My recommendation to you, try it yourself. It's freely available via Open Router and you can test it with your specific use cases. Form your own opinion instead of relying on sensationalist claims. Remember that AI models are like tools. And as with all tools, there is not one best for all tasks. Sometimes a screwdriver is better than a hammer, sometimes the opposite. It depends on what you want to build. Back to my mathematical test. What does it tell us that DeepSeek V3.1 masters complex mathematics so well? For me, it shows that we are at a turning point. The ability to solve complex mathematical problems, something that is traditionally considered a core area of human intelligence, is now available in open source models. Where expensive specialized software or paid tutors were once needed, soon anyone might have access to such powerful mathematical support. The truth about V3.1, as is often the case, lies somewhere in the middle. It's a remarkable advancement, especially considering it's open source and substantially cheaper than commercial alternatives. It's another example of how rapidly the AI landscape is evolving and how the gap between the best closed commercial models and the best open source models is narrowing. As for the future, DeepSeek will likely continue to be improved as will commercial models. We are witnessing an exciting AI race from which we as users can only benefit. More competition means better models, lower prices, and more innovation. In conclusion, one more thought. It's easy to get carried away by hype, especially when videos with dramatic titles and thumbnails grab our attention. But as savvy AI enthusiasts, we should remain critical and test the models ourselves rather than relying on sensationalist claims. I hope this video has given you a more balanced view of DeepSeek 531. And now my final question, what kind of AI tests would you like to see in my next video? More math, creative tasks, or practical coding challenges? Your ideas are welcome. If you like this update, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you activate the bell, you'll even be informed when we upload a new video. I hope to see you next time. Until then, stay real.